Hello everybody. Uh, today's lab will be the density lab. And to get to the density lab, you go to our Canvas page. And after you go to our Canvas page, you click on Modules. And then under Modules, you can scroll down to where it says Laboratory Module 2, which is right here, Density. And you'll see here the handout for the density lab, and you'll also see the submission link for the density lab. So what's going to happen is you can download the handout, and you can either use it on your iPad, uh, and write into it with your iPad, or you can uh, download it to your computer and type everything in if you want to, uh, or you can print it out and handwrite things. And if you print it out and handwrite things, then what you can do with that is you can scan it using Adobe Scan or take a picture of it, and then you can submit it to Canvas when you're done. If you're using an iPad or computer, you can just go ahead and submit it directly to either uh, uh, the the uh, from the iPad, either the, from the iPad or from the computer, straight to the Canvas submission link. So this right here is the submission link. It's not open yet, but it will be open for you so that you can submit your, your density lab. Uh, and it's not due until Thursday next week at the end of the day, okay? So you have a whole week to do this. So once you get to this part here, you can download the density lab by just clicking on it. And uh, it should take you to the density lab that pops up right here. Uh, if you want to print it out or use it on your iPad or your MacBook or your computer, just hit the download button right there and it'll automatically download to your computer and you can open it up using uh, any other software like Adobe Acrobat to write on or, or just to print it out or, or what have you. Okay, So I downloaded it to my computer so I'll go ahead and open it up in Adobe Acrobat so, I can, uh, so that I can uh, uh, write on it. Right? So here it is right here uh, as in Adobe Acrobat. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and change this to writing. I think that I can do it this way. Let's see here. Ah, that's it. Yeah. So you can click on comment and I will just close out this thing here. We don't need the comment bubble box right there. And then under comment, there's a pencil right here and you click on the pencil and now you can write, right? So don't forget to put your name here. So I'll put my name here. Right. Uh, and then so let's go through and do this lab. Um, so if you recall from the very first uh, lecture that I gave about measurement, you can actually find the density of anything by dividing the mass by the volume, right? Uh, and so that will give you its density. But the other thing you can do too, which I, did, I taught you on that very first day as well, is that if you multiply the length of something, that's got straight edges, the length of something times the width of something times the height of something, uh, it will give you its volume, right? And so this volume right here can go right there where that V is, right? And then the mass you get by weighing things out using a scale, right? Hopefully you all have scales at home, but if you don't, you can always use the one that we have here. Just all you would have to do, remember I said in class, you just have to have a book and you can just bring your book up here and you can weigh it here to fill in the rest of it, maybe on Tuesday or something, right? So getting the mass and then you get the volume of anything, you'll be able to get its density. So what is the point of this particular lab? Uh, so you know how when we were talking about the uh, scientific method, um, when you do the scientific method, you have to formulate some kind of question. And so, so you observe something and you have to formulate some kind of question. So the question then here will be, will a paperback book sink or float in water, right? Uh, and so we know that if, it's, if it soaks up all the water, it will sink. But what if in the very first few seconds, will it float or sink, right? So here, put your prediction. Or do you think it will sink or do you think it will float? Okay, I'm going to put a prediction and I'll say uh, the book will sink. Now I'm not saying that I'm right about that, but that's just a prediction that you can put. You can put the boat will the the, the not the boat but the book it will float. And so in the next step, you should write down why do you think this, right? Well. If you remember from that first lab, I said that things that were more dense than water will sink and things that were less dense than water will float. So my prediction here, or based on my prediction here, what my explanation is that the book is more dense, I forgot the E here, sorry, more dense than the water, right? And so the rest of the experiment will be going will be you going through and figuring out what the density of the book is to see if it will sink or it will float, right? But you write your own stuff there. You can say it floats if you want, okay? 
And you can say that it's less dense than water, and that's why it floats. So you put what you think there, okay? So the first step then is to write down the title of the book here, right, and the author of the book there, and then put the length, width, and height of the book there. So this is where you use your ruler, right? If you borrowed one from me, that's fine, but you can use your own ruler. Write down the length of the book in centimeters here, the width of the book in centimeters here, right? And then the height of the book in centimeters there. Whatever this could be. I don't know what they are. So, because it's going to be your book, right? It'll be a book that you picked. Okay? And so remember, you can multiply that number times this number, uh, that number times this number, and then that number times this number right here, and you'll get the volume of the book, right? Because the length times the width times the height is the volume of something that's got straight edges, right? And so that number that you get after doing that multiplication goes here, right? After you do the width, the length times the width times the height, that number goes right there, okay? And then if you remember from my lecture, I said that cubic centimeters right there was actually equal to millimeters. One cubic centimeter is equal to one millimeter, right? So whatever number you got here, right? Whatever number you got here also goes down here, okay? So let's just say for 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 fun, right? Just I'm just making something up. You got like and this is not going to be your book, so don't use this as your answer. But say you got 300, right, mils or milliliters as your volume, right? When you multiply this times this times this. Right, you got 300, okay? You got 300. It asks you how do you convert milliliters to li to liters, right? Well, that's easy because all you have to do to make, to convert something from milliliters to liters is to move the decimal point, right, to the left, okay? So in this particular number, 300, the decimal point is like right there, right, right in front of the ml. So if you want to go to liters, you only have to move it three times. So you take the decimal point, you move it there, so that's one time. That's two times, and then it's three times. So now the decimal point is there. So 300 mils in one liters is actually going to be 0 0.300 liters. You see how I did that? I moved the decimal point three spots, and that's how you get in liters. Then it asks you, how do you, well you can, can you convert the volume in milliliters to scientific notation? Well, that's easy too, because all you have to do is take the number, right, and make sure and put a decimal point between the first and second digit, right, right here, and then count the number of times you have to move the decimal point. So let's do that. For 300 mils, you, it would become 3.0, right, and then I had to move the decimal point how many times here? One, two, right? So what you write is you write times 10, right, like so, okay, times 10 to the two, because you had to move the decimal point two times, right? And that's how you write scientific notation. And that's how you write all scientific notation, by the way. Next thing to do, how many sheets of paper are in the book, right? Uh, so all you have to do here is just, you know, if it's a big book, why don't you, all you have to really do is count the, look at the last page, right? Uh, and see what the page number, the last page number is, and then divide that by two if it's a book that has pages that have reading and writing, or writing on both sides, right? Words on both sides of the page. Or if it's a smaller book, then you can just count the number of pages, right? So here, just count all the pages in your book, right? Count the cover and the back as pages as well. And if it's a really thick book and you don't want to count all the pages, just look at the last page, right? And look what the page number is, right? Divide it by two if you have a book that has the pages where there's writing on both sides of the page. And then add two more pages for the cover and the, and the back of the book, right? The next one, what is the mass of the book? If you have a scale at home, like a, a, a kitchen scale, then just put it on the kitchen scale and weigh the book, right? If you don't have a balance or a scale at home, right, then just uh, you can bring the book to school on Tuesday and weigh it there at school, right? Weigh, weigh it in the class. I'll, I'll let you, I'll bring a balance or a, a scale to class and then you can weigh your book there, okay? So just weigh your book there in class. Just bring it. And then it asks, what is the mass of each sheet, right? Well, the mass of each sheet, right, is really easy to figure out. So you don't have to weigh every single sheet of paper in the book, right? All you have to do 
is take the mass of the book, right, and divide it by the number of sheets, of, uh, the number of sheets or the number of pages you have, okay? So that will give you the mass of each sheet, right? So, I don't even have a mass to use. So I'll just write, I was about to write some number there, but I don't have a mass to use because I haven't, I haven't measured a, a book yet, but, so it's the mass divided by the number of pages, right? And that should give you the mass of each page, okay? Um, that goes in that block, right? Okay, so let's keep on going now. Then what is the density of the book? Well, that's easy because you have the mass of the book right there, right? Which should be, by the way, if you didn't know this, yeah, and you have the mass of the book, right? This should be in grams right here. So that's good. That that number right there goes down here, right? So that goes at the top, the grams, whatever grams you had, right? I don't know what the number was because it's your book, right? And divide that number by the volume of the book, right? And that would be the milliliters right here, right? I would just pick, use the one that's in milliliters, right, and put that number down here. So that would be like, you know, whatever your volume is in milliliters, right? And that should give you the density of the book, right? That should give you the density of the book. So just from there, right, you can already tell whether or not the book is going to float in water or not, because if your number is bigger than one, which is the density of water, then the book will sink. If your number is less than one, which again is the density of water, then your book will float. All right. So the next part is just about figuring out what the density of water is. Right. You don't have to really do this because I already I just told you. Okay. The density of water is one gram per mil. Right. So you don't have to do this, you don't have to do this, right? You don't have to do this, because all it's doing here is making you weigh out some water, right? And weigh, and then find the volume of the water, right? So you could use like a measuring cup or something if you wanted to, and uh, uh, that had milliliters on it, and get like 20 mils of water or something, right? And then weigh it and see what the grams is, right? And then so you divide the, the mass in grams divided by the volume, right? And that will give you the density of water. And what you should get right here, right, the calculated density of water from your measurements should be one gram per mil, right? Oops. Should be MIL like that, but just ML. There we go. Okay. And so what here it's asking here is the accepted value. The den uh, what is the accepted value of the of uh, of the density of water? That's the value I just gave you, which is the one point one point zero one point zero grams per mil, right? So what it's asking you is that this is the water density that you calculated by getting your own volume of water and then weighing that water, and so it's asking you if your number that you got for this, right, is the same as this. And it should be. It should come out to be exactly the same, or very close, right? Very close to being the same. But again, you don't have to do this part right here, because I'm telling you already that the density of water is one for your for your purposes, all right? And then it asks you what the density of the book is, right? You already figured that out. The density of the book was up here. This is right here. It right here, right? The density of the book. The answer from this problem. What is the density of the book? All right. So you put that down here. And then it's going to ask you, will, will the book float? Well, how do you know if it floats? Well, if the density is less than one, then it will float. If the density is more than one, then it will sink, right? And then it asks you why. Oh, I just told you why. Because if the density is less than one, it will float. If it's less than, if it's more than one, then it, then it will sink, right? And that's it. That's all you have to do for this lab. So again, uh, if you have a ruler um, uh, at home, and you have a book at home, feel free to go ahead and do most of this stuff. If you have a balance at home or a scale at home, feel free to do that part too. Uh, and, uh, and then if you don't have a, a, a scale at home, just bring your book up here and we can weigh out your book up here and you can put, put that book part in uh, up here uh, using our balances and our scales. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. 
uh, I'll uh, again open up the submission link it's not even due until Thursday next week so uh, once you're done filling all this stuff out just either submit it directly using your iPad or, or your uh, computer uh, or you can just take a picture of the handwritten uh, filled out form okay if you have any questions let me know send me a team's message or an email thank you and have a good weekend